Hello YouTube, I'm Nye from the Finale Guitar Shop in Sheffield. You're watching Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar. In this video I want to do a couple of things. I'm going to be showing you how to play the first of my Dadgad arrangements from the brand new Folk Friend Dadgad Collection Volume 1, which you can buy right now. Uh, go and get hold of it. And I'll tell you where you can buy it from. You can buy it from the brand new Folk Friend website, which is now out as well, folkfriend.co.uk. Check that out. If you like my videos, you'll find them all there. They're ordered by category, so it's easy to find the kind of topics that you're looking for. And there's loads of other stuff like my books. You can buy stuff on there like capos, Folk Friend t-shirts, loads of good stuff like that. So go and check out folkfriend.co.uk. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I've just launched it today. So uh, very exciting, just in time for Christmas. So in today's clip, I'm going to show you how to play the very first arrangement from the new book. This is a tune called I Buried My Wife and Danced on Her Grave. There is actually a free tab for this available as well. I've made it a free download for you with a MIDI file as well that plays it so that you can play that back at different speeds if you're having trouble with any section in it. Uh, go and check that out in the corner of the screen. It's a free download. So I'll just play you through it very slowly to start with so that you've got an idea for how the tune goes. <laughs> Something like that. So here is how you go about playing this arrangement. Um, basically there's a, a couple of little principles that you need for all the arrangements in the book. Um, the first thing is about where you put your hand. And I've seen a lot of Irish fingerstyle players that play, um, particularly Tony McManus, um, the kind of giant god of uh, <laughs> Irish fingerstyle. He plays with his hand kind of resting on the, uh, on the bridge down there like that. Um, that's really good because you've got a kind of anchor point and it's easy to get your fingers on the right strings with that anchor there. So that's a really handy thing if you want to play fast. Personally, however, um, I had classical guitar lessons when I was young and, well, I still am young, but when I was younger, um, and I was always told that you should keep your wrist up because it dampens the sound of your guitar by preventing the top from resonating properly if your hand is resting on it. The other reason why I play with my wrist like this is because um, you can also kind of build up some quite serious problems with your forearms um, if you play like that because your tendons are at a very unusual angle there which doesn't really do them any good and that apparently I've been told by classical players is better. Um, so yeah I play like this because I prefer the sound but you'll probably find that it is actually easier to play with your hand resting on the bridge. Basically, it's up to you. Um, personally, I'm going to do it like this. The other thing then is you want your thumb always to pick the bottom two strings. If there's a bass note on one of the bottom two strings, that's going to be your thumb's domain. Then your four fingers are almost always going to be on the top four strings. So you've got your little finger for the top string, you've got your ring finger for the next one down, and so on, like that. And when your fingers aren't specifically playing anything, you want them to be just hovering with their nails near enough to the strings that if you just waggled them a little bit, you could pick the right string just by moving one finger. You don't want them like miles away because then the chances of you hitting the wrong string are much higher and obviously if they've got to move a long way then it's going to take you a long time to hit the string that you want when the time comes. Let's get into the left hand of the arrangement. So we're going to start out with no fingers. We're going to pluck our thumb and our index finger, which are both on the two D strings down near the bottom, together. Like that. And then you're going to hammer on with your left hand's index finger on the second fret, and then pull it off again. So... Like that. Next, you want your ring finger to go on to fret 4 of the uh, middle D string. And as you do that, you're also going to add your middle finger on the third fret of the low A string. So that gives you 
Picking wise, I'm picking the D string there with my index finger and my thumb is doing that C note on the A string. Next, my middle finger is going to pluck the G string. Like that. So all together the little phrase is... Like that. Now on my left hand I'm going to switch so that my uh, index finger is on the second fret of the G string. And with my right hand I'm going to do the bottom D string and the A string. Then my little finger is going to pluck the top string. Like that. Next thing is put your ring finger on the fourth fret of the G string. Pluck that with your middle finger on the right hand. Then add your middle finger on the left hand to the third fret of the top A string. And then you're going to do a kind of pull off from that note where you deliberately twang the string downwards. So it's as if you're tightening your hand so that that finger's bending like that. And that pulls the finger down towards the ground so that as it leaves the string, it twangs it. So you get... Like that. And where, with that um, middle finger note on the third fret, you're going to play the A string. So... And then the open G string. So all together... Next thing, um, with your index finger on the second fret of the G string, we're going to do a little hammer on and then a pull off, and that's going to be hammering the ring finger onto the fourth and then taking it off again. And you play that with the very bottom string on your thumb, so like that. Then you're going to put your middle finger on the left hand on the third fret of the low A string and add your index finger on the second fret of the uh, middle D string. And you're going to go like that. So picking wise, thumb on the A string with the middle finger together, then the index finger, and then the ring finger. Next, you're going to put your index finger on the second fret of the A string and your ring finger on the fourth fret of the D string. And you're going to do your thumb and your index together, thumb still on the A string, and then your ring finger on the open top A, and back to the index. And then back to the shape you were doing before, which is kind of like a C shape, really. Um, and you're going to go like that. So that is um, thumb and middle together, index, thumb. So I'll just play you through really slowly what we've got so far. a repeat of the first couple of bars so we get all of this again and then here it changes so now it goes that bit's the same but this bit is different the very last little section is you're going to put your ring finger on the fifth fret of the bottom string so you've got a G note and you're going to hammer on with your index finger onto the second fret of the D string. So you pluck the bottom string and the middle D string together and then you hammer on kind of with the side of your index finger because it's a big stretch. Like that. As you pull off as well you want to pull that index finger down towards the ground so that it twangs the string. And then pluck it again afterwards. So. And then I'm going to do a little manoeuvre just to run me back into the start of the A part again because it's going to repeat all of that in a minute. So that's just a hammer on from uh, fret 2 to fret 3 on the A string. So, like that. The next part is an exact repeat of everything you just did except without those last two little notes. So all together. last bar is different on the repeat so just for the very last bar you do like that 
So without the last two notes, basically. That's all of the A part. Let's have a look at the B part. Uh, B parts in Irish tunes, they always tend to get quite a bit higher. In Dadgad, that, as I've discovered, is a complete pain because it's quite hard to play the higher parts of the scale. But uh, it can be done using a couple of very useful shapes, which I discussed in the last episode of Folky Fridays. So check that out if you want to have a little look at those. I will be making videos about them again in future as well. They do crop up in this, and so I'll show you some of those in a minute. So, the B part starts on D chord, just your index finger on the second fret of the G string, and you go... Like that, basically. So I'm adding my um, middle finger on the second fret, and then my little finger on the fourth fret of the top string. Something like that, and I'm going to actually pull off from the little finger to the middle finger, again, twanging it as it goes. And then I take that middle finger off, and then I pluck the last one. I tend to always, if I'm playing Irish tunes, this is just how I like to do it, because I like the sound of it, and it's easier to play than having to pick three notes in a row with the same finger, which I can't do, because it's too fast. Um, what I like to do is just do a pull off, and then pluck the third one. And I pretty much always do it like that. I've seen other people that do completely different things, but that suits me, so... Just on the very last note, as you play that last open string, you're going to move that index finger down to the second fret of the A string and pluck that with your thumb at the same time as the last open string. So, something like that. And personally, through force of habit, I kind of end up just throwing in a little chord there, but it's kind of optional really. Then, here is one of those very useful shapes I mentioned. So you're going to put your middle finger on the 5th fret of the G string and your index finger on the 4th fret of the top D string. And this shape is really useful because it means you can play a scale high up while you're playing in dadgad. So... That's the top part of the D mix Lydian scale, for example, without moving too much. And the other thing with that is that you never have to repeat a string, so it's easy to use this shape to play fast because you can play strings which are adjacent to one another with different fingers, meaning that you don't have to pick one finger really fast. So this is a really handy shape. And what I'm going to do here is just hold down the middle finger and the index finger and then hammer on on the top string from the fourth to the seventh with my little finger, so... and then pull it off again. Like that. The next little thing to do, once you've done your pull-off, is to slide your index finger up one, holding everything else down so that the note carries on ringing underneath the tune. And then you're going to slide that from the fifth back to the fourth. And then add that little finger back on the seventh of the top A string. And all together that will give you something like that. Next thing, ring finger on the 5th fret of the bottom string. And you're going to do this little scale run at the top. So using the side of your index finger and then the middle finger on the 2nd and then the 4th. Uh, like that. You pull off from the middle to the index when you're going down. And then you're going to put your middle finger on the 3rd fret of the A string and using your ring finger for the pull off on the top A string you go like that. The next part is pretty much a repeat so uh, and then the very last little part of the B part is uh, like this. You're going to put your ring finger on the 5th fret of the bottom D string and then you're going to use your index finger on the 3rd fret of the A string to get the pull off. So start out with your thumb and your little finger together then pull off from 3 to 0 on the A string then add your middle finger on the 4th fret of the G string play that with your middle finger on the right hand then the open top A, and then take the middle finger off again and play the G string open. So all together,
And then the very last little section, index finger on the second fret of the G string, ring finger on the fourth fret of the middle D string. Your thumb on the right hand is going to pluck the A string and you're going to go like that. And that is pretty much the whole tune. It's going to repeat that whole B part again. Um, and then you go back to the start and then you do all of it again as many times as you want. And just end the whole thing by going like that on a D chord. And that'll make it sound nice and finished. So that is the end of my arrangement of I Buried My Wife and Danced on Her Grave. I hope you've enjoyed learning this somewhat oddly named tune. I just want to say as well while we're here, thank you all very much for watching my videos. I do really appreciate it. I wouldn't make them if you didn't watch them. And uh, I'm constantly amazed that so many thousands of you all over the world do. So uh, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody that's bought my books over the last year as well. The Amazing Mode Wheel, Capos. Uh, folk friend t-shirts, everything. You're all great. You keep me in uh, baked beans. So thank you very much. So yeah, lots more good stuff coming soon. Get hold of the Dad Gab book if you like this arrangement and you'd like to learn nine more of them. I will be posting videos of some of those soon as well. And I'll be back in the new year. So thank you all very much. Have a lovely Christmas wherever you are in the world. And I will see you in 2021.